My name is Jeff James, and I'm the president of La Lamba. I want to tell you a story about two young brothers, Ashinafi and his older brother, Samson. When Ashinafi was just a baby, his and Samson's parents died of AIDS, leaving 10-year-old Samson to raise his younger brother alone. Their house, a thatched roof lopsided structure, is situated deep in the forest, three hours' walk from where La Lamba runs a clinic. There are no markets nearby or schools. A couple years ago, Ashinafi became sick. A large wound appeared near his armpit. Over time, he grew weaker from fever and malnutrition until it became clear to Samson that he needed help. Samson hoisted his little brother onto his back and made the long walk out of the forest in search of aid. It haunts me to consider that if Lalamba weren't there, Samson and Ashinafi would have had nowhere to go. But they found hope at the end of that walk from the caring clinicians at Lalamba's clinic. Ashinafi was diagnosed with tuberculosis, a treatable disease with a daily regimen of medications. The problem for Ashinafi and Samson, with nowhere else to live, they had to make that journey daily for the next three months in order for the treatment to be successful. Each day they would arrive at her clinic just before lunchtime. Ashinafi would receive his medicines and then they would sit down and share a meal with our staff before beginning the long walk home. Today, Ashinafi is a healthy 10-year-old who now lives in Lalamba's Cherry Children's Home and he's going to school for the very first time in his life. These stories of people walking great distances in search of health care, they're not uncommon. There are stories of women experiencing complicated deliveries who have crawled for hours in search of help. Every one of them is heartbreaking, and it is for this reason why La Lamba builds clinics at the end of the road to bring health care closer to those who need it most. It is also the reason why we walk, to understand the hardship of the journey and to bring attention to the challenges of those who have so much less. Tembea Namimi means walk with me in Swahili. It is a charity walk, 160 miles across the Great Rift Valley of Kenya to Lalamba's project on the shores of Lake Victoria. For those who make this journey, their compassion for the needs of the poor grow with every step. Not everyone can make the journey, but everyone has the ability to support our efforts, follow our steps, and to help us bring hope to those who live at the end of the road. Thank you, I hope you like the story. I was inspired to do this walk because there was a People Magazine article about them. And I, I'm not a People Magazine reader, or, but I, I was looking for, um, I, I was traveling actually and I picked it up and I saw it and it just stuck with me the whole time. You know, I'd always wanted to go back and see um, if we made a difference. And, you know, I think all of us want to do something that has purpose and makes a difference. And I always wanted to see what, what had happened in that village after we had spent so much time and effort working there. Yeah, it was just, it was, there's just a lot of excitement initially about what it was going to be like, if it was going to be like the pictures or if it was going to be totally different or, um, you know, and like, like all travel, it was both like the pictures and also totally different. So, and once we were there, it was just like this, uh, yeah, just being able to live in that moment and be out there was really uh, an exciting experience. So I remember getting there and it was just such a surreal feeling of actually I was there, I was standing on, on you know, on the ground in Kenya. Uh, that first day of meeting the camels was, was absolutely amazing and how welcoming everybody was and, you know, and how cohesive the group became right away was what struck me the most. Um, for me, the attraction instantly was the drovers and just wanting to get in and connect and be there. The thing I was the most nervous about was um, would I be able to walk on day five and six and seven and eight the same way I was walking on day one and two. And honestly, 
I never get up any day not thinking I could make the walk. That first day was pretty crazy. I mean, we stepped off and in the first hour, we hadn't even, you know, taken our first you know, break or our hour in. We had what was ostrich, zebra, um, a lot of uh, gazelle. Um, and we came across our first herd of giraffe and that was outstanding. So I worked at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo um, for four years prior to the walk. Um, and I had worked with the giraffes and lions in Okabe at the zoo. So obviously I was excited to see the giraffes out in the wild where they live. Um, kind of was hard to see at first because you just scan past the trees and you're like, it's just a bunch of trees. And then you go back and look and you're like, no, there's about like 14 different heads attempting to hide behind trees, not remembering that they have this big round body that's still sticking out from behind the tree, but their head is hidden. So they think that they're hidden. To be walking alongside these massively tall, you know, incredible animals. And then at one point, a few of them started to run. And that you just get that feeling of immense power when they start to run. And again, that realization that you're standing on their land, being able to experience that like nobody else. By, like day five, seeing a zebra was no big deal. But on day one, it was like, if you could see some stripes through the trees, it was really exciting. <laughs> As a young girl, my grandfather left us in our basement a stack of National Geographic magazines, all in black and white, no color. And I remember going through them in the 50s. And there were pictures of Africa and Africans and that the quintessential view of coming up over the rise and looking down over the savanna. It just made me weep because it was so ingrained. It was such a dream in my head. And I came up and there were the trees and the zebras and the gazelles and the wildebeest. And it was just unbelievable. I always thought the animals would be what I loved the most about the trip, but it was definitely the children and how many children, every time we walked by a school, how they were allowed to come running out, right? They were allowed to come out and touch us and hug us and touch our hands and we would touch them on top of the head and they were just, it was just amazing to see the kids and how excited they were to see us. Every time we were walking and we passed by a school, all the children running to us like ah, like uh, even a few meters before you can start uh, hearing people screaming you say what is happening like and then you saw like a sea of children all the kids came running out of school and they were just over the moon with excitement the exuberance of all these school children of wanting to meet you and hear your story was uh very touching and and uh it was, I felt a lot of gratitude for how we were greeted. I mean, it just, it, it, it felt like this welcome that I could not have expected. And just, you know, it was one thing to be out seeing big animals and all of that. And that was, and that was certainly was a very exciting experience through the walk, but then to come to the end of it and, and meet the people that we had walked all this way to see and, and hear their stories, I think um, really, you know, upped the whole, up the whole experience for me dramatically. 25 years ago, we had walked down that same road. We had gone to visit Matoso in our little rental vehicle. And we were walking and we got to the sign that says Matoso. And it was just unbelievable. And starting to walk down that and then hearing the voices over the hill. So we couldn't see them yet but all the Lalumba people walking up the hill to meet us singing. As we walked down the road, the staff came out to greet us and that was so sweet of them to do that. And I looked up and a woman was approaching me and she threw her arms wide and I did the same, I reciprocated and I just gave her the biggest hug. And you know, she, it, it, it was an incredible moment in that sense, because here's someone I'd never met before and just welcomed me with literally open arms, you know, and then we walked together. And then as we walked together further, um, some of the staff started singing and, you know, we listened in as they sang in, you know, in their language and it was beautiful. So it literally brought tears to my eyes. At that point, you don't, when you are so tired, you don't want to talk 
you don't want to do anything you just want to walk and arrive your destination but with all that children there and also the staff from the clinic walking with you i remember i forget for that last hour like i was so tired i just forget it the children's home is a magical place and it's the only way i can describe it we've got these 40 children who do not have um, anyone to care for them as a way of parents and the staff there are become their parents we went to the children's home we brought camels we did camel rides we played games um you know we lit them up but they lit up, us up in that moment and they're, they're the most amazing kids that have overcome incredible odds and the Lumba staff there are just incredible with them how they care it was pretty magical um i remember playing dodgeball with them and they told me i was too nice that i couldn't play dodgeball because I was, a, I never wanted to hit one of them with the dodgeball. And finally, one of the mamas came up and she threw it and really knocked that kid with one of the kids with the dodgeball. And she goes, that's how you do it. <laughs> so from then on, I started hitting the kids with the dodgeball. <laughs> See how they, you know, they have this, this, uh, I mean, they're, they're orphans. Most of, not all of them are, um, is my understanding that, you know, some are just um, there because, yeah, poverty or whatever, but, um, they're just such a joy. I mean, I, I don't even know how to talk about it, really, as you can see. I'm like, you know, they're just, they're, ki they're, they're children, and they're real children. They're, they're not, you know, um, social media kids, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? One of the um, kind of more memorable scenes within the clinic is there's this, um, there's, there's this filing system uh, of, of all the kids that are being looked after. Uh, and it's organized according to the nearby villages and just you know, lots and lots of these little little cards, but you think each one of those cards is a, is a child that's been helped. Um, and that was just a kind of a nice visual for um, the, uh, the, the amount of impact that's being made. I think like the work that La Lamba does, it's not like, every other NGO, it's different. Because when La Lamba goes to a place, they have a commitment with the community. It is not just uh, installing a clinic or a children's home. They try to be involved with the community and invite them to be part of this project, uh, to work with them, for them. You know, everyone knows who and what La Lamba does. It, the best thing to me, though, is that the workers there are all Kenyans, and I think that's very important. And that's one of the reasons I was so attracted to La Lamba. Just every day, right? Everyday life, La Lamba has touched so many of those people in that community. That was interesting to see how the people way out in the middle of the Maasai Mara were just doing life, and they didn't know anything different than that. But they were also happier than most people in this country, I know extremely different than their life there like me at 12 i was in middle school and i think i had a little flip phone by then and like i would watch tv every night and have dinner with my whole entire family almost every night and all that and probably be complaining about grades and not being able to go to like disney world or whatever one of the things that i strive for still every day since this walk the one thing that i think the walk changed the most in me was to be happy and content with with what we have and to live in the moment not to be always wondering what's going to happen next even if we don't have a lot we're still way more privileged than a lot of the world and um we i think we have a duty to do more with that and to be better um, and I think that really has really struck me this time. It's like, I, I need to be better. What La Lamba has done is given this village tools and tools to use to teach others and to bring everyone up together. You know, they, they have, I, I think they have a much more uh, hopeful life now than they did 30 years ago which is really good to see. This Tembana Mimi, we are walking specifically for the children of the Cheery Children's Home. After 20 years of running an unofficial small-scale orphan program, primarily for orphans whose mothers died at our health center, 
We have reached an agreement with the Ethiopian government to expand our services to help more orphan children who are trapped in lives of servitude, freeing them of their burdens so that they can go to school and not worry about where the next meal will come from or what to do if they get sick. Part and parcel with this agreement is our commitment to improve the living conditions of the children who live in the home. We are building new fire-safe dormitories, toilets and showers, a kitchen, a library, and securing a permanent water source to improve the health and hygiene of the children. These changes are a long time coming, and thanks to the 2021 Tambana Mimi Walkers and their supporters and you, the cheery children have a greater chance of ending the cycle of poverty that has afflicted their families for generations. Estimates for these improvements are in excess of $160,000. You can be part of this vital work by sponsoring one of our walkers or donating directly to one of the projects. Most importantly, you as a supporter, you can know and trust that your donation is responsible for restoring hope to these beautiful children. Please think about it and give hope today.